The Owl House just finished its first season, but we already have some amazing information about what to expect from season 2 and beyond thanks to the creator of the show, Dana Terrace, doing an AMA on Reddit the other day. And while she didn't explicitly say it, she seemed to drop some very interesting hints that we might see some serious development from the Emperor's Coven. When asked who her favorite character was, Dana cryptically mentions that it was a character who has appeared, but we haven't seen his face. She then goes on to mention several other characters she loves who we have seen, but not quite seen. The most obvious answer here is the Emperor and his coven, who all wear masks other than Lilith. With Season 2 well on its way into production, it would seem that we may have some episodes where these characters could be unmasked, or at the very least developed in some meaningful way outside of standing around, or getting their butts kicked by Luce, or getting their butts kicked by Hootie. I imagine whoever this spooky one is in the hoodie mask might be one of Dana's favorites that she's talking about. Though, there are other possibilities as well. In another part of the AMA, someone asks about the demon that seems to be sitting on Principal Bump's head. It appears that this demon isn't just decoration, nor does he seem to be the one actually controlling Principal Bump, but he does have his own name and apparently serves some purpose. Principal Bump does refer here and there to being much older than the average resident of the Boiling Isles, so this demon may have something to do with that. With the Emperor trying to extend his life by sending Lilith on a quest to find a flower of immortality, we can assume that he's trying to find other ways as well, so this might be how this character comes into play sometime in Season 2. Then of course they could be referring to Amity's parents, who we have seen silhouettes of but haven't actually seen in person, outside of maybe Amity's mother being in the background of Ida and Lilith's duel in the flashback in the finale. She mentions in a different part of the thread that Amity's father is one of her favorites to write, which seems to indicate that we'll be seeing more of him than just the silhouette like we did in Season 1. She even hints that Amity's home life may not exactly be what it seems. As of now, it looks depressing, strict, and almost abusive, with Amity's mother apparently dyeing her hair so that it would match the twins, as the original color was brownish-red like her father's. We may learn that their relationship runs a bit deeper than this, though. That, like with any family, the parents can be strict and harsh in some ways, but possibly very loving and supportive in others. Although she does mention that this can be either good or bad for our protagonists. I think we may discover that Amity's parents have some ties to the Witch's Coven, and while that can be used against them at first, they could ultimately use their power to turn on the Emperor and help our heroes if their love for Amity is enough to drown out their loyalty to the Emperor. Emily's parents aren't the only ones we might be meeting next season, though. When asked what to expect for season 2, parental conflict was a pretty quick answer Dana gave us. This, of course, could be referring to other characters. I just went on that tangent about Amity's parents, after all, and we do have to address Luce's mother at some point. But in another post, Dana mentions that the bird theme is a Clawthorn family thing. This was in response to whether or not we would find more bird-themed houses in Season 2, like Lilith having one with Hootie, but with a raven instead of an owl. And while it doesn't quite give us an answer, it does seem to indicate that we will be learning more about Ida's family history in Season 2. In that same post as well, Dana mentions that she likes fan-made merch quite a bit, so maybe you guys would like our fan-made merch too. We have Owl House parody shirts available on Teespring, currently we have Full Metal Alchemist and Witches Before Wizards. I'll put it in a pinned comment down below, go check it out. Now on the note of the Owl House, we may get some answers about what it, and by extension, Hootie is too. When asked if Hootie was infinite, or if there is a limit to how far he can stretch out, Dana says that there is no beginning and there is no end, though it is clearly meant to be humorous, so take what she says here with a grain of salt. In another post, however, she talks about how what Hootie really is is not only something extremely sad, but also secret. Now that doesn't mean we will be getting an answer to Hootie or his origins in Season 2, unfortunately, and we may never actually get an answer. Like Steven Universe, the Owl House may leave some things as implications, with only our own theories there to give us closure, but the show is literally called the Owl House, and Hootie himself is the Owl House, so I like to think we will be getting answers to it at some point, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's at the very end of the show however many seasons that may be. Back in Adventures in the Elements, a lot of people noticed that Luce's version of the Snowflake glyph had a tiny difference on it, and we theorized that by making these changes in a glyph, she could also make changes to what the spell does. 
This was more or less confirmed by Luce making a special light-up sign with an adjusted glyph that is normally used for the Ball of Light in Once Upon a Swap, which technically aired earlier in the season, but was produced just a few episodes after Adventures in the Elements. Dana says that in Season 2, we will be exploring the application of glyphs even more. This makes sense considering that Ida is no longer able to cast spells using only her finger. While she does have the help of her staff, Owlbert, it seems that she will need to learn all sorts of glyphs to figure out how to do things that she was able to just wag her finger to do for the entirety of her life. And, on the note of Owlbert, we have a really interesting reveal about how he is made. During the show, Ida mentioned that she carved Owlbert from a special tree, but Dana explains that this is something all witches do to create their palismans either during school or with parental supervision, presumably near their graduation. The note she ends on, however, is a cryptic one about how you can only do this if that tree is still around. The immediate theories that this evokes is that it's a dwindling resource that, by the time Luz goes to get her own staff, it will already be too late. However, at a second glance, it may tell another story. After a search through the season, despite there being a full episode dedicated to how palace mints have been discarded, we don't actually see any active ones anywhere around. This would be something that Hexide students may do towards the end of their studies, so we wouldn't see them there, but even the teachers are never seen with the staff, nor is anyone at the convention or walking around Bonesboro. Even members of the Emperor's Coven are not seen using them. The only characters who do seem to have them are Edith and Lilith. The Emperor does seem to have a staff, but it is mechanical more than anything without any proper palismen on top, indicating that it may be closer to one of those training wands that we see in Adventures of the Elements. This says to me that the tree used to carve palismens may actually be long gone, with staffs being something of an old-fashioned thing that people no longer get. The people who did have palismens seem to have abandoned them after they experienced a minor break or tear. This would explain why the Emperor is eating discarded palismens and their energy, as opposed to just chopping down the trees that they're made from and absorbing the magic through them. There simply aren't any trees left. It may even be one of the reasons that the Emperor created the Coven system. People weren't just wasting magic that they were using in spells, but wasting other precious resources like those trees. Now, I don't think that means that they're gone for good. Ida probably has a chunk of wood laying around that she was meant to give her own children one day and will inevitably give to Luce, or perhaps Willow will be using her amazing plant powers and the help of the plant coven's gauntlet to regrow these trees so that a new generation can experience having a staff in a responsible way. But for now, these are only theories. Let me know what you guys think in a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you next time.